So last, last week we were talking about uh, our needs and um, well, our emotions and then identifying the need behind that and also watering um, your self-care needs. So on that, um, if anybody wants to share, if they were able to do some self-care this week, uh, what was that? What did, what did that look like? Or anything else that came up that you discovered from last week's workshop that you decided to implement in, uh, in this week? And for the new folks, <laughs> if there was anything you did this weekend for self-care, share in the chat. Yeah. Um, I'll speak as for me. I did motorcycle. I always do motorcycle. But I mean, like, Saturday, I rode for, I was around 10 hours, not straight, not and off, but like from 12 till 10, I was riding all over the place. For me, um, identifying that I needed more rest and um, the lack of sleep and the cause of that, what I did was I turned off my phone before I went to sleep. And that was really helpful because I found that um, if I woke up in the middle of the night to um, have young kids, so to meet their needs and I saw flashing whatever was temptation for me to go to my phone and then I would see posts and then I would just trigger and then go through the whole cycle. So I was like, you know what? I need to turn off my phone completely. So. Um, and that was really good. That was really helpful and I was able to rest faster and for longer periods of time. Um, for me, I know the last session, something that like resonated with me was like self, self-compassion, which is something I never thought about a lot. So I kind of took this weekend to like, like do things for me and make sure I'm like, um, constantly reminding myself that like I'm doing my best like I'm I'm doing what I can and just like being easier on myself rather than um like forcing myself to like go back and do work like you need to do stuff you need to do this like there's all these tasks it was kind of just like reminding myself that like I'm doing good and also for me like turning off my phone like my um I know my iPhone tracks my hours on social media and on the weekend like they skyrocketed down like they were maybe two hours I was on social media in comparison to like six. So that was good. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And just being able to identify the moments where your mind train, that's being mindful of like what the thoughts were and then um, redirecting those thoughts to be more compassionate. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. What about you, Davika? anything um similar to Katrina I was just more self-care and like really taking time for myself and just reminding myself that sometimes it's okay to walk away and like yesterday I wasn't well and I had never done this in my life before but I put my phone on silent I'm like I am not answering anybody today um so that was new for me because I've never done that before unless like it's in a meeting and you can't have your phone on but for me just to say that my phone's gonna be on but off at the same time, I don't normally do. Johnny, what about you? Like, I know you work on weekends, so then flip it. Anything you did during the week to uh, to take care of yourself? Something you enjoy, de-stress? So he said I also did put away my phone for most of the time. My iPhone does track my time usage as well, and my time significantly went down trying to be more I started the alchemist two of my friends read that this weekend <laughs> <coughs> um doing more prayer time and trying to do more yoga when i have the time and energy yeah me too <laughs> on the on the stretching um side of that um i've been doing a little bit more of that even if it's like just one stretch for whatever amount of time um between kids jumping on me, it's still possible. So I resonate with that and also the prayer. So um, that's great. It sounds like everyone was able to put um, some self care in their in their week in some capacity, and I encourage you to continue to do that. And um, also part of 
self-care and just um, your well-being is connecting and connecting with others. So on that topic, um, I want to do a little bit of a journaling exercise. So if you can get, if you're like a journaler like Terrence, or if he has a notebook handy, I bet. <laughs> um, so you can see, there you go. So <laughs> you can <laughs> get your notebook or you can write in your phone, whatever. Uh, works for you and I want you to think about when you feel most connected with others so that can be a friend a family member it could be um, a mentor a teacher anything but when do you feel what's what's happening where are you what type of feelings are coming up when do you feel most connected with others and just do a, a free write based on that topic and that question and so the next thing to think about as you're writing is what was the last time the last experience that you felt like you were most connected with somebody and it doesn't have to be a partner um, or a romantic relationship to feel connected with somebody. It could be anybody. It could be, as I was saying before, um, a cousin. It could be your best friend. It could be um, a teacher. Any experience, any experience where you felt most connected. And just write about that. And also thinking about what was the environment you were in. And even in that experience, what were the things that um, helped you feel connected? What was happening that made you feel really connected? Maybe that was like feeling heard, or maybe there were similar interests and values that were happening in that experience, for example. <clears throat> maybe you felt sense of trust and understanding. Right. What was the feeling behind that? And then thinking about how you were communicating with that person in that last experience you had where you felt really um, where you felt really connected. Um, how were you communicating them? Think about your, your voice, your maybe body language, what did that look like when you were communicating to them? And also, what medium did you use? How were you connected? So it could be through text or uh, WhatsApp or Instagram, or maybe it was a phone call or you were walking together. And now that you wrote those things or complete your last <laughs> sentence, um, just take a look at all of it and just reflect on what you see and note if there's any discoveries, if you, if you um, discovered anything during this journal activity, if anything came to light about why you felt connected, some of the things that were happening that made you feel that way or facilitated that connection. And we're gonna give you a mentee just now for you to share anything that came up that you feel comfortable sharing. So you go to menti.com and you fill in the code 35-77-25 just answer that question. So either on your computer or your phone. I'm just writing in my, my answer right now, but if somebody's finished and wants to share. So one response is feeling connected is rare. Instead of connecting with another person, I had a moment where I connected to my younger self. Another one is uh, I discovered being vulnerable allowed me to connect with others better. Just being myself, expressing my feelings, and experiences. Um, I feel safer talking to someone either in my phone or in person versus texting. I connect more to people 
people with things in common with me. And a smile with a stranger. Ooh, yeah, those moments. <laughs> those moments. Of those moments when you can just like connect eyes with somebody and it's almost as if you're having conversation with each other's eyes instead of so much just staring at each other there's another mentee um <clears throat> phone call with my best friend you're actually listening and not just venting they genuinely wanted to know how i was yes i like genuine genuine yeah not that just how was your day or hey how are you and then they start talking about something else or Whatever, but really taking that time to be present and listen. I need to want to know. So thanks for for sharing what you discovered. So um, I think it's important to note what um, what are the things in the the environments that help you feel connected and um, and facilitating. So instead of texting someone, if you are if you feel more connected by a phone call, maybe that's um, that needs to be facilitated that way. Um, maybe you're the one to give the smile first and initiating that connection if you if you feel called to do that on your on your um uh if you're stopped on your bike at a red light <laughs> and you have a moment i don't know <laughs> but just thinking about um what are the things that are happening um feeling heard and um when you when you are connected with somebody Cool. Yes. Um, so con continuing along the lines or conversation with communication, this is, you know, just a moment. Um, but in that moment, there's a lot that you can learn about yourself, what styles you like, what mediums you like, things like that. Um, and part of, of communicating is, I don't know what is it, 70 or 80 percent is body language, right? A major part um, is your body language. Now, that may come into effect if you're speaking in person or over video chats, you know, things like this. Um, mind you, it may not come into effect if you're on the phone, but it's, it's not just physical, right? It can be tone. Um, so even if you're on the phone, your tone of voice can affect that. And even through text, although you, you cannot see or hear the person, we now use emojis to kind of express that same kind of body language, right? So got another mentee coming up, two questions. Focusing on body language. So the first one I want you to answer to is, actually let me switch it on before I even say it so you can just see it while we read it together. That's no worries. So yeah. Okay, so the first question is, how do you express yourself with your body language? So if there, you notice that there's certain things that you do, mannerisms, are you open, are you closed, arms crossed, uh, major hand gestures, I don't know. Um, are you likely to uh, make eye contact or are you someone that looks down often yeah. or maybe when can you make eye contact versus when you don't? I'm going to think about it as well. And we can even think about too, when you feel connected, how do you express yourself with your body? And when you don't feel connected, what are the things that you're doing with your body too? Katrina, would you mind reading some of them off? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so from Menti, it says, I use my hands to express what I'm saying. Anger, frustration, excitement, joy. I have a different... Lots of hands, and then animated face and lock eyes. But it also depends who I'm talking to. Sometimes I need, a, need to tone it down. Um, we have another one that says smile, eye contact. I talk with my hands a lot. And when I'm connected, I lean on, lean on more and make eye contact. If I'm not, I look down. A lot of arms and hand movement. Arms crossing, down there. A lot of animation going on too. Animated it's movement. Another one. So when I don't want to talk, I look down or I don't face the person sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it seems like when you're connected and you want to talk, 
your body, from what I'm seeing, is more open. It's moving a bit. Um, there's eye contact. There's um, excitement or energy through the body. Um, smiling. And you want to connect, um, well, we said, yeah, eye contact. So there's that part of it. And um, I'm assuming that you're probably, if your chest is probably open or facing them on some degree when you feel connected and open. And if you're not, um, what was said, so not facing the person, so maybe you're like side by side or like slightly like this. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> half listening, half giving that attention or looking down um, when you're like, not today. I know sometimes I, um, for me, maybe I like use my phone as an excuse and I'll go down or sometimes I'll say like, give me 10 minutes, like I go away. But I'm usually, I can't, you can't see me, but like crossed. I'm like hugging myself or not, let's see. Like Gotta that. go back to watching you because yeah. like, we're, we're on the other screen. Okay, Shay, demonstrate. Okay, sorry. Saying. Yeah, I was just saying that sometimes uh, when I'm not in the mood to talk or to connect to somebody, how I say that to my body is well, one sometimes I use my phone as an excuse and I kind of turn away, bring my attention there then instead of the person. I don't know if any I'm alone in that, but that is something. Or I um yeah, like I just come into myself. I kind of like this versus talking and using my hands and being open and more of um, closed off in that sense. And I'll do that physically with my body too, even that's how I'm feeling. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody now. Just give me, give me some space. <laughs> yeah. All right. So how does your body speak to us personally and speak to others? So <laughs> do you want to elaborate on that? Amanda, sorry. Me? <laughs> well, because you're still, you do a lot of the like focusing on body and how body your body speaking to you, especially with the yeah. guided mindfulness. So, how does our body talk to us? Um, so, our body communicates in different ways. Some of the past workshops were speaking to that in terms of um, the emotions can speak to a need that you 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 need, and that's one way your body's saying. Um, I need you to, uh, I need some comfort and some connection because I'm feeling sad or I need, um, or I'm hungry <laughs> or I'm getting sick because I'm feeling these sensations in my nose or whatever, right? So our body, or like if you're, Terrence, you were talking about being sore the other day, you're from biking so much and your body, you're feeling that tension and that's going be your body way of saying, you know, I really, you really work these muscles. Maybe we need to rest a little bit. <laughs> so our body physically talks to us by telling us what we need and our emotions do as well. So um, hopefully that helps clarify it a little bit. And you can give an example of maybe something this week um, that your body spoke to you personally or, or something that you noticed personally and then were able to express to others um, within that? Um, the first one says, my body tells me when I'm anxious or nervous, my stomach aches, my head pounds, and I sometimes feel dizzy. Another one says, some people say I look scary when they see me, but when they talk to me, they say I'm very comfortable. As, as for me, I get a frog in my stomach when I feel like I'm not speaking my truth. Mm -hmm. Another one says, my body tells me when I'm overwhelmed, I get sleepy and my head hurts. So our, our body, you guys already are being able to identify um, how our body is speaking to us and also some of the, the needs that are coming up with that, especially um, you've already said when I'm anxious, these things happen. So that, that's an indicator for you that your, your, your body's saying you need to do something for that or um, to speak your truth. It's like, I've, I had, um, so an example for me that just came to mind is that I was um, doing some voice work singing, one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so part of my range that I typically have access to, it wasn't flowing the same way, right? And I was like, what is happening? What is like this tightness? What's going on with my voice? 
And after I spent some time just being mindful about that, I was able to relate that uh, tension back to um, hurt and loss from a past relationship. And I was like, you're not stealing my voice. And then I was able to get it back <laughs> um, in a very fast nutshell of what happened. But through singing and realizing like, I don't have access to that vocal range. There was tension there for me in my voice. I realized that I wasn't speaking, um, I wasn't sharing as much uh, due to a hurt in a past relationship. So your body can talk to you in many, many different ways. And when you're mindful of it and you are paying attention or recognizing the signs, you're able to then have a choice to uh, meet your body's needs or speak your truth. Um, uh, or I'm feeling overwhelmed and going back to those circle of cares and that self care that we've been talking about and, and seeing how can I um, speak love back to my body and just come back to a, a whole well place. And we're back. All right. Um, so now I'm going to do a little activity. Uh, hopefully y'all can can see your videos are working all well, that's good because we're gonna watch a video um, so I'm not gonna tell you too too much about it because I really want you to to watch it take it in listen to what they're saying um, watch them as they're talking how were they communicating what's their body language um, what's the response when they're they're listening to what's being said um, Everything. What do you just take it all in? The verbal, the physical cues, all of it, and then yeah. we'll discuss it afterwards. And I just want to preface that with saying that um, there are lots of different components to communication, and listening is a big, big um, part of that. Uh, so this exercise is practicing that. And as you are listening, um, pay attention to your mind. Notice if while you're listening, your mind starts drifting off and thinking about, I don't know, whatever comes to mind, biking or the time or whatever. And when you notice that, then bring your attention back to listening to the video. And that's kind of like strengthening your, your listening skills and, um, like a, and your mind too. That's like a, a mindfulness exercise. If you think of your brain as a muscle and you're, you're working on focus right now, we're listening and when you notice, oh, my mind is wandering, coming back to the paying attention of what this person is saying. Um, another thing that might be interesting if it comes into your awareness of when you are listening to somebody, um, if, you, if you start developing your own story in your mind of like, um, like for example, if you're in, uh, if you're having a conflict that you're talking about with a person and this person is chatting, 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 and then you start just like building your rebuttal, but you stop listening because in your mind you're like, oh, but I did this and you didn't say that and da, 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 and you're kind of like prepping your arguments back to them. But while you're prepping your arguments, you're not, you're no longer listening. So um, just as we watch this video, just just pay attention, like what is my mind doing? How am I listening? Um, as we are just gonna do this experiment, this practicing of it. Not caring what people think will be the best choice you ever make. Bro, this whole I wanna be popular stuff is basic. I know you see the cool kids, they dress fresh, they get the attention, they turning up, they going to parties, and you wanna be like them, right? Keep it 100, sometimes you feel like you're not enough, right? Well, I'm telling you, you are enough. You were born original. Don't you dare die a copy. You were born to stand out. Stop trying to fit in. Popularity does not mean quality, but I get it. I get it, see, in this crazy world we live in, it has no chill. Some people are, are loved for being fake and others are judged for being real, but you have to be real. Never stop, because it's better to be hated for who you are than liked for who you're not. So what if you don't fit in? So what if you're not perfect? Do you know how diamond experts 
can tell if a diamond is real or worthless? See, the fake diamonds are perfect. The real ones have flaws. And just like that, fake people appear perfect. Real people make mistakes and have flaws. And let me tell you this, the coolest people don't care about being cool. The people who care about being cool are the saddest. When they go home, they're not happy with who they are. Cause see, popularity is when other people like you. True happiness is when you like you. See, me and you, bro, we got the same story. See, I was that shy kid. There was nothing I wanted more than for people to like me, but it didn't happen. And I would always think like, like why? Why can't more people like me? And then it dawned on me. See, sometimes the universe has to protect you from what you think you want. See, me not being popular gave me time to work on me. And when I worked on me, everything changed. When I had the courage to be me, people started coming to me. See, I found out that I was enough already. And just like that, you are enough already. See, nobody has lived your life. Nobody can tell your story. So pick your hand up. Don't dim your light so that others don't have to squint. Don't hide your shine underneath the shade. Don't trade your dignity for popularity. You may not be popular now, but you will be great one day. Right now, you may not be well known, but one day you will be worth knowing. So keep focusing on you. And don't worry about what these people think, mainly because most people don't think. Most people will judge you based on an opinion from somebody else. Man, treat these people like coupons and cut them out of your life. Leave them on red. It's time to focus on you. You may not see it now, but in five years, none of this popularity stuff is gonna matter. See, popularity ends on yearbook day. What you build and who you become will last the rest of your life. So don't let them write your story. You keep caring about what people think, you will forever be their slave. And you're stronger than that. So never forget who you are, because it is who you are that makes you great. Yeah, we're gonna stop that message part. <laughs> so, just as you are, don't shift too much. Take a moment to look at your body language. Just take a little scan. How are you sitting? Um, is your, where are your arms, where are your chest? Are you facing the video, where are you close? Just do a, a mindful check-in on how your, what your body language is saying right now. And now take a moment, close or lower your gaze and ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? And just note that for yourself. Okay. So we're gonna go into um, a bit of a exploration of what this message was. So, oh, one thing I just missed, I want you to, to note down in your mind, <laughs> um, what was happening in your mind as you were watching that video. So for example, for me, one thing I noted was, I like said, I was physically shaking my head when I was like agreeing with something or I said, mm, and like that sound came up. Did anything of that happen for you? Just reflect. This is where Yell can type in your, the chat and respond. Um, yeah. As you're yeah. typing. Dude, there were times where I just wanted to be like, yes! And I'm like, <laughs> my mic's on. <laughs> and then for me, there were times where I was like, my mind wandered. My mind was like, what's that tattoo on there? And I was like, oh, I'm not listening anymore. Um, and just noting, like, there's no right or wrong just like that's a moment where I my mind started to wander or um I started to get a little critical of like just because in my background of like movie theater that's a little bit of me too I was like there's there's too many letters here or like <laughs> and I was just like oh I'm actually not listening to the message I got into my like critical brain there so just just note like 
anything that you discovered about your your mind as you were watching it talking about the the video then okay so what what was the main message what do you think the main message of the video was self-love and being true to self when you were looking at that video and you're watching both of them the, the spoken word artist and the person that that he was speaking to um what was what was their body language like both of them did you notice anything stand out about either the the artist or the youth um did you notice anything about when they were speaking certain language certain body languages or maybe the interactions with each other anything stand out to you what was it saying a couple responses to the last question too oh cool we have like confidence in discovering who you are and then being you unapologetically i think i said that right <laughs> nice so what did you notice about the body language of the people in the video individually interacting with each other responding to any of what was said certain moments and what, what was it saying so was there anything that stood out to you any moment that really like you could was very obvious not taking on other people's opinions of you yeah one thing that i noticed and oh wait there's i'm gonna wait for someone else is writing the chat so you guys can go first before i speak uh, so in the chat, uh, the one speaking was maintaining eye contact and using their hands to speak. Um, I noticed that the one that was speaking, they're, they were very open, like their chest was open, they're not closed. Mm -hmm. um, and the other person, they're, they weren't making eye contact, and less of the statements that really connected with them. And... Um... I'm just thinking about the tone of voice now, the one that was speaking. Um, he was, or they were, um, they had a strong voice. Like, it didn't, you know how sometimes you talk in your trails down at the end and you're like, what did you say? Because I do that all the time. <laughs> um, there was none of that. They were, they followed through with the sounds and what they were saying. Um, and they were making cool you already said making eye contact and with the other individual, they, um, there were moments of, of like opening up and going in, opening up and going in, um, that's what I noticed. And just like touching on that too, like the speaker was always, like I know we said that, but was always open. So whenever the uh, individual they were speaking to did have that moment to like look up and open up, like he was, um, the speaker was there to op like open and like looking at them and making them feel like um like they were present so they didn't like lose that eye contact or anything which i think is great when you're speaking to someone even if they're not looking at you <laughs> yeah it's kind of like showing that i'm here for you no mm -hmm. matter what yeah that yeah. body language i don't know if y'all know also noticed the ball so like the ball sometimes was fidget playing and then near the end when you could see that the youth was feeling more confident it was still holding the ball but was not fidgeting mm -hmm. it was it was solid holding it um and not crouched over so went from like crouched over looking down to like sitting up straight looking like totally turned <laughs> body language yeah to, like face the, the the speaker and just like look them right in the eye after a while Mm -hmm. um yeah that was big but then i was also noticing so when you were talking about the film thing i was like the positioning of him was kind of awkward in the beginning kind of cool later on that it, it forced him to turn his body around to face a speaker but it also made me think of that proverbial angel devil on the shoulder kind of deal <laughs> like here's this person over your shoulder it could be like an older version of you or younger whatever but you know speaking those things in the air yeah mm. oh one thought that i had um when listening to it on my mind trail <laughs> that just reminded me of that that talking aspect of like um yeah but you don't know who i am you don't know my circumstance you don't know like mm. who are you who are you <laughs> um to be speaking this to me um and when i got like caught up in that and and even my own experience of missing um 
missing out on on hearing <laughs> and and um and that might be very true like you might be speaking even you could have been in that circumstance where you're you see all these these great things in an individual but because they don't see it or feel it that they are remaining closed off or th those are the thoughts that are happening in their head so that was just something that came up um that reminded me of, of that came up yeah yeah so what were some of the the feelings what were the emotions that you guys were pulling out of the nah you guys that you folks are pulling out of the video anything stand out sad motivational or motivated i guess lonely mm. i have the word that's coming now is uh to mind is uncertainty mm. anything else stand out for anybody for me i feel like i was like very connected to um the one individual that the speaker was talking to i felt almost like i connect even though i didn't know much about them or there it wasn't like a storyline where i could follow i just felt connected to those emotions of maybe feeling like um, having like a lower self-esteem or wanting to fit in and and not being able to fit in and like all of those emotions kind of, it just like resonated with them a lot. And so that connection was kind of strong for me. Mm -hmm. Anybody and in a little chat? bit of hope, I would say, Ooh. like near the, the end, like a little bit of, Okay, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. we'll see, but Might have swayed me just a little bit. Just a little bit of hope. And for the person that was speaking, um, getting from them is just um, the emotion is like of such care. And um, I feel like there's just a need to like wanting to let people know like there's there's um yeah i feel like compassion you have the compassion and a drive to uh, speak life into this individual uh was the kind of the feelings that i was getting and um like it's a funny real, that you said that because the next question is needs there we go okay so i won't talk too much so go no no yeah no key course so yeah you're talking about the um the artists and then and the needs that they were communicating mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about the uh, the youth in the video? Any needs that kind of pop out to you there that maybe um, maybe you could see his facial expressions from his responses that maybe he needs certain things. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're imagining like maybe okay. We're not saying you know the person, <laughs> but if you were to hypothetically come up with from what you could see and what you can imagine, what do you think his needs are? One need that like I noticed that connects back to the body language was um, how they were kind of bent over a little bit at times, like Terrence mentioned, and it almost felt like they needed support, like someone mm -hmm. to just lift them up and, and help them um, just have that courage. So that was kind of a need that was portrayed just through body language. Mm -hmm. At least I, that's what I got from it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's a nice observation. Mm -hmm. So the needs that uh, are coming up right now is support, um, comfort. So sometimes um, this is like this is learning and uh, practicing. Like how can I listen and hear somebody's need? How can I identify that? Or how can I even identify that from that there's a need missing based on body language and so it's just a, a good practice to to keep your mind open to as you're listening to um to however friends family members colleagues i also have the wheel of needs from last week i don't know if that would be helpful to send it in the chat maybe to kind of spark some ideas mm -hmm. Oh, the real needs. Yeah, toss it in, toss it in. Yeah. Moving forward, moving on. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, by the way, sorry, if you want to see that video again or whatever that, that artist, it's uh, Prince Aya. I'll put the link actually in the chat as well. So if you want to check it out, mm -hmm. you can do that.